coming right there. All right, guys, Instructor Z here with Tactical Rifleman, and I'm glad to be back with you. And of course, I'm sweating already. I wasn't sweating at first, but I know how you guys love me to sweat in these videos, so I got to keep the theme going. Sweaty once again. Uh, so, Z, and we got a special guest this time. Uh, honored to work with him. Ryan Hoover, I'll let you introduce yourself. I'm Ryan Hoover. <laughs> Fit to Fight Republic. <laughs> See? Uh, with Fit to Fight, um, I, I, I appreciate the invitation to be here. I can't wait to see what we're going to run through here. I've had a good time working with you guys and shooting today and um, looking forward to it. <laughs> We've had a long day of shooting, but we're here for you. So first off, uh, we're doing some mobility today. We're going to work on some of your ability to move, therefore stay alive, hopefully. But uh, we've had a lot of problems with guys coming to classes and we start talking about uh, the, the inherent fact that goes along with fighting somebody in a gunfight is that when they shoot at you, you get real small. Whether you're trained, whether you're a ninja, whether you're scared or not, you get small. It's kind of instinctual, right? Um, it, it just happens. So we know that in order to win a fight, you have to dictate the pace. You have to become offensive at some point to win any type of fight. And when we say fight, we mean guns, hands, any other tools. Uh, the awareness to strategically move or tactically move within uh, a chaotic environment all together. That's what we mean when we say fight, just so you guys know. So if I can't dictate the pace in a fight, probably not going to come out well. What do you think, Ryan? I totally agree. <clears throat> I have to be offensive at some point. Yeah. I, ring, cage, parking lot, living room, wherever. At, at some point, I've got to hit the other guy. And if it's just right. defense, nobody wins with just defense. Well, you see, you can see on fights uh, when, whether you watch the UFC, boxing, whatever you watch, when one guy starts pummeling the other guy and that opposition just covers up and receives it, it's, it's the beginning of the end usually for them, right? So in terms of gunfighting, if I start getting shot at and I get down and maybe I'm safe temporarily because I've gotten behind cover and I've gotten small, I survived that, that first instance of the gunfight, but I, I need to dictate the pace at some point. I got to become offensive or they're just going to move forward with aggression and take me out, right? Uh, it happened in Dallas at one point in time. There was an active shooter. Uh, he went around. He was pretty well trained. I think he was a former uh, military guy. Uh, There's video from a, a hotel room from up above, and they show an officer decked out in his body armor and, and had his rifle in a shootout with that guy early on in the in the confrontation and then the officer left his shooting position went around a large cement pillar and he was being pretty mobile and he didn't sit like a sitting duck necessarily but he just took a long time to become offensive again the bad guy he seized that opportunity he came forward he made his way to that pillar and he was more aggressive in that moment and he got the drop on that guy so that is one of the better examples I've seen in a real life situation uh, of showing what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, it was the bad guy utilizing that aggression and dictating pace to the good guy. Um, but we're going to learn from it. That guy didn't die in vain. We're going to see that. We are going to take that lesson and we're going we're gonna to make better. So first off, for you gun guys, we're going to involve our rifle here. So I've, shot, I've shown a lot of mobility drills and I've done stuff with pistol. Rifle tends to be... Uh, the biggest issue with a lot of our shooters when they come to class when they have to get in these different positions atypical positions and then you have to have all these things aligned on this longer instrument of warfare here with the butt stock and the magazine in the way it's just a lot more uh, furniture to deal with and line up with my body why I'm in these atypical positions so much like uh, the Proverbs you can dodge a wrench you can dodge a ball we're gonna do it the hard way and then if it comes to a pistol or something else smaller that's easier to manipulate in weird positions, then we'll be able to do that. But rifle is where we're starting here today. And notice I've taken my bolt out, it's empty. And also I have an empty magazine, but I wanted to have the magazine involved just because it provides that little more, a uh, uh, little bit more of an obstacle when I'm moving around, right? I can't just get flat, flatter than I would be in a real situation with real bullets, right? So I've got my optic on so I can align my sights because as I go through these positions, for me, I want to make sure that I can align my sights in those positions. A lot of guys, they can get in those positions, like I said, but when it comes time to seeing where the sight is and making sure that I have a free and clear shot to engage what I'm trying to hit, 
it, they have a hard time doing that, right? And the more time I spend down there figuring out what I'm doing in that position and trying to line my sights, the more time the enemy has to dictate that pace on me, right? I got to become offensive. First, I'm going to do it without the rifle, right? So we got it involved here. I'm going to sit it here. I'm going to tuck my hat down, and then uh, I'll kind of dialogue with you as I go through yeah, these yeah. positions. So we talk about if I'm from in a standing position, I want to have a gateway that is safe and effective to get into the alternate positions that I'm going to be in on the ground, right? Yeah, you can dive straight down. A lot of times, if you haven't got any training, you haven't built in a system yet, you will dive down. And I mentioned this in an earlier video about me losing my tooth, breaking my tooth off because I dove down a little too aggressive and I didn't have a good way of doing it besides just diving like a crazy ass, right? Didn't work. I didn't like breaking my tooth out. And, uh, you know, I want to maintain my combat effectiveness as I get into these positions. I don't want to just hurt myself even worse and uh, make it harder on myself. So everything starts with a knee. Which knee do I take a knee with first? A reminder for you guys, I'm going to take a knee with that back knee most of the time. First off, because to me, that's the easier way to do it instead of sliding forward on this knee. It a lot of pain and undue stress, much like a, a double leg shot in wrestling, right? I'm not trying to take up space between myself and an opposition here necessarily. I'm just trying to take a knee in one spot. And that back knee also allows me to place that knee right where my foot was just at, right? So if, there's, if I'm on the ground, and of course, if I get in a, a life-threatening situation, I'm not looking at the ground like, is it soft here? I'm gonna be looking like, what the hell's going on? I need to figure out the situation quick. And I need to program the system into me so I can uh, put my knee down safely. So I'm gonna be like this, just drop straight down. Now my knee is where my foot was just at. So there's minimal chances that I'm gonna place my knee on some broken glass on the ground, big rock or whatever. It's fairly clear for me to put my knee down. Uh, once I get into that position, Ryan, uh, much like we know uh, a lot of the mobility drills we do for just fighting in general, no matter what martial arts you might practice, um, it's like a shoot box drill where I'm rotating my leg or knees in different directions. So from this knee kneeling position, of course, I've got modifications to the kneeling. I can squat down, I can raise up, depending on what I'm trying to shoot through or shoot around. My next gateway is uh, seated, seated. So I'm just going to rotate this leg underneath. And this is key here. During a gunfight, I don't want to do this. Uh, let me get back up here in the fight, right? I want to control my descent the best I can, right? Uh, and you can still do it fast and be controlled with your descent coming down on your butt from the kneeling position, but you have to disperse your weight a little more evenly. If I have a gun, it's even easier because I can lean that out or if I have body armor, it kind of controls my descent so I'm just not flopping down, so to speak. So I lean forward and I sit back and now I'm in that seated position. Um, from here, all right, I, I can go to a, a, call it a fetal position. I got a lot of slack or a lot of flack from a, a video I did and I was saying supine, but I meant the middle position. Yeah. And they're like, that is not supine. Bruh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I disgraced America. But so supine is here, fetal is here, right? So we're gonna have kind of both of them, it's gonna be kind of fluid. So from that seated position, I can roll over into a, into a fetal right position. And then I can rotate back into a supine position, right? And then I can rotate over to a fetal left position. Now what's from here? So of course the good old prone, right? Is necessary. Well, it's pretty easy to go to prone from here. One aspect of this movement uh, that I like to, to emphasize is not swinging your legs way out here as you go to prone, but trying to rotate with my hips in place as best as I can, right? So basically, this movement here, rotating into the prone, not getting too long left or right here. Uh, coming back up from the prone position, up to both knees, and I can take uh, one leg and post it up so I'm back at that one knee kneeling position. Yep. Uh, one thing I didn't add in there and I will add it to the flow is the rollover prone, right? And this is the one that gives people the most problems when they're aligning their sights, but it's pretty easy relative to the rest of the moves for your body to move into the position, right? It feels a little weird for some guys, but I, I enjoy it. But so uh, rollover prone, I can do it easily from kneeling. So instead of going into my seated position here, right? I'm just gonna put both knees down, rotate to one side, 
put my shoulder down to the ground, right? If I want to go to the other side, I rotate on my knees. If I have a rifle, I have to switch the buttstock to the other shoulder, go to the other hand, and I'm back down to my shoulder, right? Uh, one key aspect, and I'll do it with the rifle here in a minute. When I have the gun down like this, the buttstock is not in my shoulder. It's going to be in the crook of my elbow. And this bottom hand or this support hand is going to make somewhat of a frame, or I call it a spider, to rest my gun on, right? Uh, it's a little bit easier that way. And you'll try it out. You'll see all the little nuances, and you'll figure out the best way to do it. And you'll probably hopefully figure out that the way I'm showing you is the best way to do it as far as uh, serving your muscles and your energy. You're not just balancing the gun out there. You're letting your hands sit on the ground and you have a solid post or frame or st a stable platform to sit that rifle on. So uh, what do you think? You got anything with those movements? Well, the, my, my, the, the thing that jumped out to me when I first saw you do this was, well, two things. One, there's no mover movement that you just did that you won't find in every jujitsu class that there is. Every good one. That was coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's crazy to see how fighting isn't just this or isn't just this. Sometimes it's that, you know. Um, that I, I think when we've talked about this in other, other videos, you know, and I don't know if it's an American thing or what, but we want to compartmentalize. And there's so much... Um, that, that translates in, in all different areas of fighting. Literally every move and movement you did, I just, as I was watching you the first time, I was like, yeah, that's a jiu-jitsu warm-up. That's a wrestling warm-up. That's, you know. Um, and then the other thing that, that really stood out to me, and I think this is important for maybe people that don't do jiu-jitsu, martial arts, whatever, is everybody, you know, thinks about dumbbells and kettlebells and pushing barbells and whatever. But if you can't control your own body weight, if you can't move your own body, I, there's no point in even touching any of that stuff. Right. You know, I hear people all the time, well, yeah, but you're 150 pounds. Of course you can, okay, that's fine. That's my body weight. That's what I can move around yeah. and I can do it efficiently. It's not my problem that you're 230 and you can't move your body efficiently. Because right. that's the body you've got. So if you can't learn to, if this is the world that you're going to have to live in and you think if you're going to carry a rifle and you need to be able to maneuver and move and you end up on the ground and you have to get small, you need to be able to be efficient in your movements. We talk about, um, and it's the same kind of thing as what you're talking about, is we talk about incidental defense. I'm, I'm doing things that just by virtue of the way that I'm moving make me less of a target and allow me to be more offensive. And it's the exact same stuff that you're talking about, right? I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself into a position where it's harder for the bad guy to get to me and it's easier for me to get to them. Right. And, and I'm not just crouching down. I'm moving, I'm being active, I'm being busy. No, no different than if, I, if we were boxing or kickboxing or whatever, I don't wanna stand right in front of you, right? You're, you're way bigger and stronger than right. I am. Why, why, would I, why would I stand here and just try to trade like blows? Two rams. Right, it makes no sense. Bigger, stronger guy is almost always gonna win that. You know? So at some point you have to be better. Um, and, and good mobility, good movement, good tactics, that, that is, is kind of the equalizer. I mean, it's right. a sliding scale, right? If, if the other guy has those good attributes too, now Where you're am in, I going to gain trouble. the advantage? That's right. Um, and I mean, I, I think it's, it's important that we're honest about that, you know? Attributes matter. If somebody's Hell bigger yeah. and stronger, that matters. If somebody's a better shooter, that matters. All of those things are going to come into play. There's no magic pill that makes you a ninja in, in a weekend and allows you to well, other than the three payments for 99 three payments $99. three installments um, three installments um so that th those were the things that jumped out to me, at me when i was watching you like a a good jujitsu guy or even a, a, a relatively basic level jujitsu guy with good fundamentals could pick up on this really quickly yeah. you know and then if you put a a rifle in their hands and they get a basic understanding of the movements which i guess you're, you're, you're going to show us in a minute they could probably pick up on that pretty quickly and then vice versa if you get a guy that is is familiar with a rifle and how to move and how to find how to get sights in line and all that stuff and then teach them the mobility part though there's going to be a learning curve there but they've already got right. one side of that down they need to get the other side and and so i think there's a lot of uh crossover here um it's just 
I, I think where the problem comes in is, is people's mind and mindset. They limit what what box they allow themselves to yes. to to look into. Like, hey, this is a gun guy. This is a jujitsu guy, or this is this guy. Well, you know what? If you're a true capable citizen, right? You're well rounded. I think what you try to I try to look for the reason why and the necessity in my world on a day to day basis. What do I need to be able to do? Yeah, I need to be able to have lethal capability because other people have lethal capability. Do I need to have uh, capability to drive out of something? Yes, I got to have that capability. Do I have to have capability to save someone's life potentially by stop the, stopping the bleeding? Well, you might encounter somebody hurt that has nothing to do with a life threatening situation uh, inside a self defense world. May I need, should I, would I need to be able to move? Well, sometimes maybe I'm just, uh, I got caught in a situation, I slipped out of something, or I got in a car wreck and I got to exit the car. So I got to have a, a good understanding of how to move potentially. Or in this case, if I'm trying to dictate the pace of a fight, I don't want to have to put a lot of thought in how am I moving? How do I get my sights lined and how do I get in those positions? I just need to get there. And I need to have my, my, my conscious mind thinking about what is going on right now in front of me. That subconscious mind has to take care of the rest. Now, from the fitness aspect for you guys, the reason I'm doing this all together is because I want to give you something that somebody asked about this in an earlier question. And I think you probably remember. An older fella, he said, hey, how can I start off with some fitness slash martial arts stuff and, you know, for a guy that's got dodgy joints and, you know, whatever. A lot of us have limitations, right? Uh, and I understand, like I said in that video, I'm supple, he's fit as a fiddle, and not everybody's that way. <laughs> that's a joke. But we do have our, our, our injuries and our, and our alleys and our hurts, but the way that we navigate that on a day-to-day basis is, yeah, I had to limit some of my intensity in our workouts, some of our time and frequency and, and some of the way we do things, right? But I will do a little, a lot. A little, a lot. And one thing that the vast majority of the world most likely does not do is not get below chair level to the ground very often, unless you go on a picnic out in the, and that, now you got the fold out chairs, right? So you got the little you collapsible have, chairs. No. And I understand it could be more comfortable to sit in a chair sometimes. It is comfortable, but you are losing a lot of your natural ability to, to be mobile the way you were born. You take a toddler, uh, somebody showed me this once when they taught me how to stand up or they were teaching a class on how to do a get up, uh, a proper technical stand up or a combat uh, get up for, in jujitsu. And they said, if you take a toddler and you sit, one the toddler that knows how to walk, right? Yep. You sit them on their butt, they do a technical stand up every time. They don't like rock and like, help me out, buddy. They just swing their leg back yep. and they get up and they're like, oh, let's keep walking, they right? Do nice squats too. Right. <laughs> yeah, they do. And they came out of the womb. Nobody taught them how to do that. They didn't go to CrossFit uh, workout and somebody teach them there. They just, they came out there. So we're meant to be mobile. We're meant to have that ability to squat and to get up in a proper way that is mechanically sound and uh, is efficient. So um, it helps you when you have opposition on top of you, when you have pressure on top of you, and it helps you when you don't have opposition on top of you. You're able to manipulate your body weight like Ryan was talking about. And I'm 220 right and i need to have strength relative to the size of my body and and the cool the cool thing is these are mostly things you can control right you know yeah you got injuries whatever you have to work around them but you know if, if you're not able to do xyz we'll put in the time to do it otherwise there, there's really no excuse you know you you can control a lot of things there's a lot of things you can't control but one of the things you can't control is the amount of work that you put into something you know, your, your own physical fitness and well-being, your strength, your conditioning, those are things that you can control. Right. Even, even if you've got injuries, there's still things you can do. Yeah. Um, so. You just yeah, it, modify how much you do it, modify the way you do it. People still squat and they just do not all the way down, not as deep as, I don't go as deep as I used to go, right? And it's just things I have to do so I can have a day that, be comfortable on a day-to-day -day basis and not be injured and laid up all the time, right? So that being said, if we do these movement drills, right, I want you to do them and not think tactical. I want you to just think, let's get my body moving. But for you guys that maybe uh, it's not very motivating to you to get into a gym and do stuff like this, you can do that. Put knee pads on if you don't have pads, right? Knee pads I do recommend because your knees will get beat up a little bit. Mine are pretty used and abused and worn out, but they still... And 
and they're rough, but I still would like knee pads if I was doing it on some harder surface, right? So get some knee pads, make it comfortable for you so that you will do it on a regular basis. Do it consistently daily and do it just for, don't even count, don't even use the bandwidth to count reps. I like to set a timer and just do it at the pace that I can maintain where it's, where I can ha happily do it and not just get smoked and be like, screw this, I don't wanna do it anymore. So if you wanna go faster because you wanna get out of breath, do that. So whatever you think is comfortable, but do it a little bit often, consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. This will help you not only get better at shooting from those positions and, and knowing where to be when it comes time to shoot from an obstacle or from cover, when you're trying to dictate the pace and still maintain some safety behind something that is covered, but it will also just get your, your body moving and used to those things that you may have forgotten or, or, or you, you aged out of because you didn't use some of those movements or some of those parts and ligaments and muscles that you were born to be able to use, right? So this is what it looks like, Ryan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it a little bit. I want you to do it too. And Ryan admittedly is not a gun guy, so to speak. He carries and he knows enough to protect himself and be a capable citizen. And I wouldn't even consider myself a gun guy, but I do have a lot of experience with this rifle, right? Just by, by virtue of the job that I had for many years. So. Uh, we're going to have you do it here in a minute, and I'm just going to demonstrate. So this is the key part. I'm going through the movements, but I'm going to align my sight. So I've got my sight turned on here. I can see my sight, and I'm going to make sure if, uh, if I wanted to, I could put a little piece of paper, 8.5 by 11, something like that. Just put it on the wall, or just pick a point on the wall. And obviously, if I was in a gym with a lot of people, don't bring your rifle, but you know, be, be aware of your surroundings. I'm in a place that I can do this, but I pick a spot on the wall and I gotta line my red dot sight, or if I'm using iron sights, I gotta line my iron sights, which is also a good adaptation for this drill, just so you can make sure you can do that because lining up two things is harder than lining up one thing. Uh, but I'm lining my sights up from each position. So let's start with it. I'm here, gun safe again, like I said. I'm in my regular shooting stance, and when it's time to begin, I just enter my kneeling position, right? And like I said, I can. If I was doing this for fitness, I would maybe sit down in this kneeling position and then stretch out my hip flexors a little bit. Or my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My groin. my groin muscle. That's why I got him, so I don't even know these things. So this is what I like to do when I'm warming up. So I can come to a knee and do this before I progress on to the next movement position. Or maybe sit down on my ankle, maybe put my laces to the mat and stretch out my ankles a little bit. So there's no hurry to move from this position but I'm in a knee position. Then once I'm ready to progress, let's do the rollover prone first, right? So now I simply just put that knee down, right? And I go to the rollover prone. This is one of the hard ones for aligning your sights. I'm rolling over to my knees. Notice I'm trying to keep a small signature this way. I don't want to spread out too wide, right? Uh, assuming that I'd be behind something small. And I'm going to bring the rifle buttstock into the crook of my elbow. Right? Not into my shoulder, into my elbow. I don't need to really absorb a lot of, of recoil here and shoot very fast from this position. And my, my bicep can handle that. So I'm here and I just line my face up where the red dot is. I don't have to have my face a cheek to stock weld position. My face can be floating, right? Don't get too close and hit yourself in the eye with your scope if you have a big scope. But I'm back far enough I can see the laser and I can lift the rifle on the front end with the support hand that's making somewhat of a spider on the ground, right? And I'm just using my primary hand to lean this against my support hand. And I'm just holding it there and I can move all the way around. I can look at Chad's crotch. I see your crotch there, Chad. All right, and I can shoot it if I wanted to. Sorry for muzzling you, Chad, but it was a good picture of your crotch. So I'm here. Now, if I want to go to the other side, I just rotate on my knees and this is where the knees could be a problem if I was on a harder surface, right? Here's a little bit tricky. It also involves moving or utilizing my, my support side, right? So I gotta come out of the sling if I'm using a sling, which I am an advocate of using the sling for this maneuverability drill because if this is what you're gonna have on your rifle, you need to learn to work around it. Switch my rifle to my other shoulder, right? Rotate back over in that rollover prone position. Now my primary hand has become my support hand and the buttstock is in my bicep again. And now for me in this position, I have to like close my right eye. I got a dominant eye, right? So I have to close that right eye because it's hard for me to get the right eye behind the sights. So I close this one so my left eye can take over so I can see my sight on there, right? 
So if that's something that you, when you practice this, you'll figure these things out and not in the moment when you need them. So I'm here, I can see my sights, I can rotate the fire and shoot. And once I'm done, I rotate back to my primary shoulder. I can put my arm back through the sling and I'm back in that kneeling position. Uh, so what I hit right there was just simple kneeling, roll over prone right, roll over prone left. Those are not very difficult when it comes to the mobility part, Ryan, but it is difficult to actually get a line behind the sights, I find. And that's where most people have a lot of difficulties because they just, I don't think they feel good with their, their head floating behind the sight. I don't necessarily need a cheek to stock well though. So uh, before we move on, you wanna try it out? Sure. All right. So everything's safe, the bolt's out of there, magazine's empty. All right, so Ryan, all I did was I, I hit the kneeling, I hit the rollover prone right, hit the rollover prone left, see how you like it, and see if you can get behind the sights. Pretty easy, he's feeling the stretch right there, right? It's cause we're doing this for the purpose of being mobile, uh, doing it as an exercise kind of on a, on a consistent daily basis. Got his rifle, he's rolling over. Uh, so he noticed he's, he's finding it right here. So guys that don't do this a lot, that you can see Ryan, your head's got to float back there, right? You can't really put your head where you want it to be, where yep. you normally would feel comfortable with uh, the rifle. So you're floating, he's got his claw hand or his spider hand there supporting. And he's got the buttstock is down in his bicep more so than his shoulder, all right? It's just, it's easy to do it that way. Here, he can go to both knees again. And now he's switching sides, buttstock comes over, and now he's essentially doing the same thing, just rolling to that other side. So it's double difficult now. We're doing it on our, our weird side. <laughs> so, and you might have to, you might find that you have to do it like I do, Ryan. You might have to close your dominant eye if your right eye is yeah, your dominant definitely eye. Do. You can see how it can be difficult. And what you do, use your, your primary hand yep. and, and, and tighten your grip on the, on the pistol grip a little bit so it pulls it into your bicep a little bit. So that kind of controls it. it. Use that to, instead of managing it with that front hand yes. like you normally do, you manage it with the back hand. Yep. Does that make sense? It made a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's something for you guys. Like, I guess sometimes I forget to, to mention some of these nuances. We do them so much. And I, and I realized that when I remember when I was showing it and I'm moving it around yep. with the back hand, I did mention it, but I forgot to remind Ryan. No, as soon as you said it, it made a huge seen, difference. Yeah, you pulled that in. So normally, and the reason I say that because it's almost the opposite of what we teach guys when we're talking about running a rifle in, a, in an aggressive manner, right? We teach them, hey, lock this bitch in with this hand. Yeah. This hand just needs to be able to be loose and fluid to flip that safety back and forth, work that trigger, do other things. It only takes control when I take this support hand off. But this hand is doing all the work as far as managing recoil. Well, it's the opposite when I'm in that position here, roll over. Of course, I'm not pulling back on right. this hand at all. It's just kind of balancing the rifle. This, so this hand in the back has to kind of take control, be a little do stronger. More. Yeah, do more work, so. Makes sense. Yeah, it, I can definitely feel the difference. Yeah, it's a concept that you, you gotta feel it. So we've got kneeling to roll over prone right, roll over prone left, so those are the easy ones. Now let's go kneeling into uh, the, uh, the rest of the positions and We'll go all the way to prone. We'll go all the way to prone. So kneeling, as, you, as you've seen, or if you've seen my video prior, kneeling is my gateway. I go to kneeling before anything, and I think that's pretty natural. Like if I was scared, I don't normally f jump flat on my belly unless I was trained to do so, and I hear a round go over my head. So if something happens, like think about when you see people at, like the bombing in Boston Marathon, and you see a lot of people, they hear the boom, and yep. this is kind of natural to them, right? Like, what the fuck, yep. right? So it kind of plays to my natural instincts. Oh, what the hell was that? Now I'm down on the knee. I can still easily get up, right? I'm not locked in this position yet. So I like it as a gateway. So we go down to kneeling. And now from here, all right, I get my shot. I line my sights. That's pretty easy for the kneeling position. Now can I rock back into my seated position without losing my balance and kind of uh, losing my stability, right? So remember, I rotate this foot in. Lean forward, the rifle kind of off mount or uh, counterbalances me, and I sit back, controlled, yeah? Um, from here, I like to work it back and forth. So before I progress through all the movements, we'll just work this back and forth for movement sake and yep. fitness sake. So once I did that, I could shoot from here. I could change this all kinds of ways. It could be this kind of seated, this kind of seated, whatever I want. It's just like the kneeling position. It's, it can be modified, right? But this is just the base position here, right? 
when I decide that I want to come back up to my kneeling position, all I'm going to do, this is key, I got to move this leg out of the way. I can't go where that leg is in my way, right? I got to move it out of my way. So I think about bringing my heel towards my butt, heel towards my butt. And now the same thing I did when I was coming down, counterbalance my weight. Now I want to throw my weight in that direction. So I throw my weight over that knee and come up, right? Uh, I do it a couple times. So windshield wiper out, sit, controlled, right? Throw my weight forward, windshield wiper my foot back towards my butt, come up. Now, the difficult part with this one is it requires a little bit of hip strength. Some people, their belly's in the way or just how you're built in general it won't allow you to do that very well. So there's a modification, right? Modification is pretty easy. Um, if you can't rock forward or say maybe you're a body armor guy, you're a cop or a soldier and you got body armor on, it's like this thing's limiting me and it made me heavy up top, right? So in that situation, I'm just going to control the rifle with my support hand and whatever my back hand is, is gonna come down to help me rock up. All right, so I can't do this. No. Post that hand behind you, 45 degree angle. And I kind of push myself up onto that knee. A Little bit different from what we teach in jujitsu because jujitsu we teach to bring the foot or knee back to the hand where I'm giving up space. And that's still a viable option. It's just, I don't necessarily, in this context with a rifle, I don't have somebody over top of me pressuring me, so I have the ability to, to push forward a little bit without pushing someone's weight off of me, all right? So again, I came down, I can rock up to a knee, come back seated, and then if I can't rock up, take that primary hand off the rifle for a moment, sit up to that knee, and now I'm back in a kneeling, kneeling position, and I can continue standing if I want. Before we move on, let's try that. You wanna try it? Rifle safe, he's got the kneeling position, pretty easy. He can work his stretches there, whatever he wants to do, and he just windshield wiper that leg, controlled his descent down onto his butt, right? What I don't want is him dropping to his butt and then doing this and then, oh, let me get back up. Uh, seconds or milliseconds are, are an eternity when it comes to people kill, trying to kill you, right? So we don't want to give him that. So he controlled his descent. Now he can windshield wiper his heel towards his butt, sit back up, using a little bit of hip strength right there. Now, pretty easy right there, pretty easy. And you know what, for guys, if you start doing this consistently, if you can't do that right away, give it some time, start working it a little bit. Don't hurt yourself, do what you can do safely and it doesn't cause any pain. And you'll be able to get that strength. That, uh, many people can't do that until they start working that muscle again, right? So if for some reason Ryan had a ton of body armor on, he's down in his seated position and he can't rock up or maybe he just doesn't have the strength or he's not familiar with this, he just takes his primary hand, posts it behind him, helps himself push up onto the knee. Pretty simple. Now we, we hit kneeling, roll over from right, roll over from left. Then we seated and then came back up from the seated position, which could be a movement drill in itself. I just wanted to work that back and forth, excuse me, to each side. Maybe uh, up two minutes on the right side, just working slowly. Maybe two minutes on the left side, working slowly, coming up and back. It really gives you a good hip workout. So, Let's move on to the next positions or the next progression in the movement. So kneeling, and now I'm going to go straight to seated because I've already been there. And now, let's say i got to get a little bit lower. I'm shooting under a car. I'm shooting under limited space here. Can I just roll over onto one side, call it the fetal position right? Fetal position right. Now, everything pretty much is the same. It's not the exact same as the rollover prone. I can still keep my rifle buttstock into my shoulder. I can still align my sights. Uh, like I normally do, right? And I still got the support hand to pull in. I don't necessarily have to put it on the ground. I can do that. That's a modification, but I don't need to. I can shoot here. Now, pretty easy, fetal position. Things I gotta look out for here, uh, safety-wise, is I don't yeah. wanna put my foot in front of my, my muzzle, so I gotta be aware of that stuff, right? Um, can be dangerous when we teach it on the range. We make sure people's feet are clear. I don't let them shoot until I make sure their feet are clear. If I had a tire on a car, I could post on that tire and use that to move me in certain ways, however I want to. Um, so it's a good position. From here, from feet to right, I'm just going to rotate in a supine position for you internet trolls out there. This is a real supine. I get it now. You taught me, right? I could still, this is a little bit difficult position too, so I have to kind of change my traditional hold of the weapon. 
instead of putting it in the butt or the butt stock in my shoulder i kind of let it float again and i could just engage from here if you're close enough i mean i don't even have to aim i just right. point um not for this position here there's not a lot of times that i find this useful for me to um uh, actively go to this position without someone making me go to this position so i don't see a lot of benefits from this position unless there's just some weird space that i was in that required me to do this but think about if i got knocked down on my back right for some reason or i stepped backwards because i got scared i tripped on something i ended up like this i could still engage right even though i didn't pick to be here i'm still offensive here and then it goes right into my fetal right and fetal left speaking of that fetal left is easy make sure you miss your knees right even though I'm safe with my figure. I got a safety and my trigger fingers off the trigger. I don't want to make a habit of flagging my own self, miss my knees and rotate out my butt out. And I could switch shoulders here if I wanted to, like if something was, was too low and I couldn't see or get my rifle low enough to shoot underneath whatever I'm using. I could switch shoulders, right? I could take my, this arm off. I could take the, the, the weapon all the way off of my, my uh, body with the sling and switch here, right? So I can be able to shoot under that for me. For mobility purposes, I'm just going to keep it in this one position on this right shoulder, right? Do as you see fit if you want to keep switching shoulders and try that. But here, I'm in that same fetal position except to the left side, watching my feet in front and still getting a good sight picture on whatever I'm aiming at here. All right, I can get a little bit lower. I can even go upside down to make up some of that space or some of that gap right there. Everything's the same. Uh, make sense? Now, back to supine. Now, here's the difference. I come back up to my seated position and now I go up to a knee again. So bring that back or rock up, everything's the same. So kneeling, seated, fetal right, supine, I can modify my grip, supine left, or excuse me, fetal left, right? Back to supine, push up on my elbows, looks like I'm just coming up into a seated position. Right, then I can rock forward or do the modified post, come up to my kneeling position. I shut the hell up now. May need you, don't go far. <laughs> I'll remind you to them. All right, when you're ready, he's kneeling, he's going to a seated, and he's going to go fetal to the right, which is basically a shrimp position for you guys that are our jujitsu guys now for this make sure my feet will be more forward here so i'm still minimizing my the length of my body here because i have something small and i use my feet here to push me and slide me wherever i need to go all right now he can rotate over to his back in the supine position now he's got it modified you kind of have it let it float right there he's still engaged and he'll roll over fetal position to the other side he missed his knees he's keeping his feet protected they're not in front of his barrel and they're not hanging out here Potentially outside of cover, right? Now he's back to supine, right? And now, whatever way he wants to come up, he can go on the left or right. He's coming up on the right side. He came up to a seated position, rocked up onto his knee, kneeling position. Pretty simple, right? Feel, feel. Yeah, I mean, familiar. We're never having done it before. No, yeah. it's great. <laughs> you did great, man. If you did this about for a minute straight, you think you'd get a little bit of mobility, fitness out of it? Oh, absolutely. I know. 100%. All right, so next, we got the fetals. Now we're gonna go into prone. Now I could go straight into prone. So I'll talk about that real quick and then I'll talk about how to get there from the fetal position. So straight into prone is simple. Kneeling, don't dive down onto my gun. A lot of people wanna do this and shoot down, landing on their magazine or on their gun, which can cause a malfunction, you can cause problems with your gun, cause you to hit your gun and knock your tooth out, some of you know what I'm talking about. So just use your post, right? So I'm here, support hand goes down, and I shoot my legs out behind me. Now I'm in a, a shooting position. I could change and roll a little left or right, whatever I need to do to come up. Same thing, just an opposite. I post the hand, and I jump my knees up under me, and I can come up that new position from there. Pretty simple. I'm not going to have you really do that. Uh, we can do it here in a minute, but the hard part is going through the gate. So maybe really not a tactical context. I just want you to be mobile and give you a drill to do. So, but if I happen to be in the fetal position for some reason, and then I decided, hey, maybe I need to get in the prone, there's a way to get there. So starting from the beginning, kneeling, seated. I could go fetal, 
supine, fetal, right? And from here, any of the fetal positions or any of the other positions, I can go to the prone position. One thing I want to be aware of is rotate in one spot where my hips are. Think of your hips as the corner or the, what's the word I'm looking for, Ryan? Axis. The axis that I'm going to rotate on top of, right? So I don't want to just sling my legs out here and do this. I kind of want to stay in one spot. So if I can thread the needle, meaning bring the bottom leg underneath and rotate my hips backwards and come to that prone position, that's what I want to do. Um, if I wanted to come back from that prone position, I simply do it in reverse. Basically sliding my hips stay in the same spot essentially the whole time. And my legs rotate around on that axis. Same thing from the other side. Here, rotate underneath. So my legs behind. When I'm coming back, notice when I'm doing this, I make my legs light by leaning over on my shoulder and walking my legs around. So, give that a try real quick. I'll talk to you. Yes, please. <laughs> So he's going kneeling, he's going seated, he's going to go down to his fetal right. All right, protecting his feet, he's going to go to his supine in the middle, missing his legs like a good sport. Now he's going fetal to the left, right? And now he decides, hey, and he's got his legs positioned already. I just I need to swing around and get to my get my belly down. So just swing his hips on that single axis there all the way around, right? He's staying behind the sights. The gun is essentially where he needs to put it. And if he wants to come back, he just swings his, his bottom leg or his left leg back under to come to this side. Look at that. Hips on the same axis. Everything's good. So if he rotates back to supine, now back to this side. Now I'll swing around the prone from that side. Now come back to that fetal left side. Simple as that. Simple as that. How's it feel? It didn't feel as now, smooth as when I watched you do it. Hold on, come back. <laughs> come back to that fetal uh, right. He's fetal right. Yeah, there you go. That makes it a little bit easier. So yep. I noticed your elbow was out. Yep. So we tucked that elbow in. And you can do it either way. If I needed to prop up a little bit more, right. of course, you could modify, throw your elbow underneath there to get a little higher. But if I needed a little lower, say the car sits here, yep. then he, he's got it. He just tucked his, his uh, shoulder or his elbow underneath. Now he's on his shoulder. And he can also use your legs to push up on that shoulder like you're using that shoulder as a tripod right there. So just get your hips high. So he can balance on that shoulder. And it's not a lot of... Cause a lot of muscle fatigue. Yeah. It's it's pretty solid bone yep. on bone contact. So that's what we want. We want that ability to be efficient. Um, so come on back to supine. Now he's gonna get to a seated position by just tucking his leg and rocking himself up. Now come to his kneeling position and and there it is. There it is. It's so beautiful. It's magic. All right. All right. So let's let's me and you on the spot. Let's put together. I mean, that's everything right there. We went kneeling, roll over right, roll over left, um, seated, uh, fetal right, fetal left, even went to prone, and then went back from prone into uh, the fetal positions and all the way back up. Mm -hmm. And then I showed you, you can go from prone straight to your knees just by hopping your knees up, which is, doesn't take a lot of you know, ability necessarily. So let's meet you right here on the spot. I've got a, this guy, he's got a gym, he's got, uh, fitness centers. Um, he's got a, a lot of expertise concerning this stuff. And just because I've got muscles doesn't mean I'm an expert on doing physical stuff. I just done a lot of it, but being an expert on is two different things, right? So I wanted Ryan here so we could come up with a workout for you guys, like to implement these movements and something simple. I don't want to, I mean, if you want to, by all means, if you want to smoke the hell out of yourself and, and go for broke, do what you feel good for yourself, right? But I just want you to do a little lot. Every day, if I went through that whole series, maybe set a timer, five minutes, I don't know, five minutes, you could probably get to the whole series at least four or five times, depending on how fast you go. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get out of breath. If it hurts, don't do that. Stretch in each position as I get there, whatever feels like it's tight and like, hey, that's not very comfortable, comfortable for me to be in that position. We'll sit there and loosen it up a little yep. bit. Almost like a yoga pose hold, right? 
uh, technical yoga maybe we can call it, I don't know. Um, either way, these are effective positions to shoot from. They, they're tried and true. Um, they allow you to see through different portholes or, or whatever you may have on a range and you'll see if you, if you try it. Um, it gives you the ability to, to stay relatively small if I'm trying to work behind cover and still maintain that offense or dictate that pace with that rifle, like I said. And for you guys, knock out all of them at once. If I can yeah. get more bang for the buck, that's what I'm gonna do. Right. If I'm the old guy with the dodgy knees, I'm gonna work on aligning my rifle, holding that rifle, getting used for that, getting ready for that fight. And I'm also gonna work on my mobility and just in general fitness as I'm doing so. I think that's a, that's a good, yeah, absolutely. That's a good approach to it. Yep, and I, I think the timing thing makes sense. Not going for reps. Yeah, I don't want know. to count. Right. I'm thinking about what I'm doing. Yep. I, and, and, and when I do you that time a lot. it, you can self-pace it, you know. And when you rep, th there's this this artificial, like it's arbitrary. You gotta do it. You just made up a number, and yes, I, I think the timing makes a ton of sense. That way, if I want to go faster and get more in, I can. If I need to yeah. back it off, maybe I even come out of the gate hot, and then I need to. Right. back it off and you know I, i've got some maybe there's one aspect of it that i'm struggling with so i can take more time on that one aspect now i don't have this arbitrary number that i have to try to attain i want the bandwidth for doing the movements i don't want to count yeah. just let the timer do it you figure it out one thing i want to add from a tactical standpoint or just a a firearm standpoint as i'm doing this many of y'all might ask this if i wanted to manipulate that safety just to go through that process of working those little nuances that are involved in shooting work it but remember anytime i come off those sights and i break that gun down in order to move and i haven't made a decision to shoot at that point meaning my tr finger is off the trigger uh, i'm out of my sights that gun it goes back on safe when it's a rifle with a safety like this right so if you're working an ar platform and safe or fire engage safe and i move to my next position in the series so always i get asked that many times and i and even though people know better sometimes they haven't practiced it enough and they leave that gun on fire and that's not the way it's meant to be handled right and i can tell you uh from the highest levels of the military and everybody that i know that's used these a lot we would put it on safe in between those positions those transition moments between the positions all right so do that if you want if you need to work that muscle memory a little bit so uh let's let's give it to you what do you think is a good if i if i pick three of those moves or, or just a series of something to do in a two minute period yeah what would you do, you think? Just put I, me through it. I, honestly, like, because I think this is going to be the, the most common thing that people are going to have to deal with. And then the hardest thing for people that are just starting out, and that's going from standing to kneeling to sitting and then back up. And back all the way up to standing. Yes. So almost like that Turkish get up, getting a little bit of that yes. leg strength in there. Yes. So if I one thing to it, get down there, sooner or later I got to get back up. You know, and yeah. I, think, I think that's going to be a hard thing for a lot of people that aren't used to doing movements like this. And now you put, you, you, you know, yeah, got this in there. Not, I mean, it's compared to a pistol, it's, it's not very wieldy. It's very unwieldy compared right. to a pistol, you know. And so I think going from standing to kneeling to sitting and then back up, if, if I just had to drill down on a, on a certain part of the flow, you know, I think that's the, the thing. So, yeah, so I was going to start on one, maybe I'm just working some strength. They are just a workout in general and didn't want to go through the whole series at that point. So we could do this. So I'm here and almost like a, a lunge. Yep. I'm, I'm down. Work on controlling my descent down here. Right? Once I'm That's here. That's core engagement. Right? Yep. Engagement. There's my engagement. I can save the semi. All right. Save. Back up to my knee. Come back up. Check again. Boom. 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 Maybe I rotate sides, so maybe I did it on that side for the first one, then I go here. Switch. I think that's going to be a lot of work for some folks, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you're not used to doing anything, it's a lot of work for anybody. Treadmill, getting on a treadmill is work, you know. Yeah. And and so here, you're not using your hands. It's exactly what you're talking about, not getting below that 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 chair, chair space, level. you know. Um, you're not using your hands, you're forcing your body to work in ways that it's probably not used to, to work, and that's gonna be a lot of work. And I mean, even if you're super fit, okay, go faster. Put more time right. on, you know? It, it's like, um, I, I got a buddy, I shouldn't say a buddy, a guy that I, I've, I've talked to off and on about fitness. 
His name's Ross Enemate. His, his, his functional fitness work, uh, he's, he's a boxer, trains boxers. And he's like, look, you want a, you want a hard workout? Go out and sprint as hard as you can, as far as you can. <laughs> and then stop, and then do that again. And then stop, and then do that again. I don't care what level your fitness is, you will get If you're going hard as you can, that's you right. will. Watch, watch an Olympic sprinter run 100 meters. At the end of that 100 meters, they're like, <gasps> it's not because they're in bad shape, it's because they gave everything they had. Yeah. So something like that, if you're getting after it for a couple minutes, you should be smoked. Well, and the good thing about this too, so you guys that, hey, I'm beyond that. I've got plenty of mobility. I'm strong. You do circuits. You done circuits. I do circuits for like everything, right? Yeah. That's my thing now, right? I just, I'm trying to build some of that uh, anaerobic slash aerobic mixture there, uh, depending on what I'm doing. But I like a circuit, man. Yeah. You stay busy. You're hitting it heavy and hard. Do it on a time limit or whatever, and you don't have to think about much. Go over here and do it. Yep. Go over here and do that. Add this into a circuit. So I'm over here, I do my deadlifts. Maybe I run down 100 yards and back, right? Hit some battle like, ropes. Yeah, hit my battle ropes, and then I grab my rifle up. Oh, I'm tired. Make sure you get a sight picture while you're breathing hard, right? Because that breathing becomes important. Work that safety. Safety, Spine there we go. Movement, yep. All right, and I'm working the safety the whole time, and I'm keeping myself honest with that. Hey, I didn't do it. Remind myself. And that's some of the things, if I don't have a system built in, that's some of the things you forget, and that's a liability if you can't incorporate those, uh, those default systems when you're tired because inherently any fight, probably going to have physical fatigue <laughs> to some degree, right? Any fight. Yep. Any fight. Um, you're going to have to. If you don't, it really wasn't a fight. Yeah, it wasn't a fight. <laughs> or you're just a psycho that's like fights every day and you're yes. just like, I'm so calm. Yeah. Right? But oh, you're probably not a psycho. Um, so that's one of That's one good one that we can include in advanced workouts as a circuit or just you doing that movement for the older guys or the guys that just aren't used to that movement. Just do it. Five minutes even. Do slow, fast as you want. Yep. Slow as fast as you want. Stretch out once you're in those positions. If you feel like a little... Uh, a little tightness, stretch it out. Uh, I'll add one more. I'll add one more that, that guys can do. All right, guys. So one more little series that we can do during a workout in a in a circuit or just by itself for time. And I'm gonna let Ryan do the honors this time. There you go, gun safe. So I'm thinking, will you kneeling, seated, fetal right? Then rotate, thread that needle into the prone, and then come right back to that fetal. Go to supine, go to fetal the other side, swing in the prone, and then back. And then all the way back to standing from there. Okay. Right? I'll kind of walk you through it so you don't forget. That's a lot, right? Yeah. If I had a, like a whiteboard, you know, like for workouts, I'd put it up on the board. Hey, what am I doing? Yeah, I'd have to right? have that. Then we get it. You get it over time, right? So he's going to go kneeling, seated, fetal to the right side, right? Then he's going to swing his legs back behind him into the prone. Now he's going to swing them right back to where they were. Right? Now he's going to go to the supine in between his legs. Now he's going fetal to the other side. Swing his legs back into the prone. All right, swing them right back to where they were. Come up to a seated position as he sees fit, which is usually in the supine, whatever seated position he can get into. All right, so just come up to seated. Rotate that leg underneath, come back up to the kneeling, and then all the way up to standing. All right? That's work. You, is it some work? You think you could do it with the safety? Woo! All right, I'll remind you. I'll, I'll, I'll clue you in. All right. Uh, so I'll give you a safe to semi each time. Okay. And then when you move again, you just put it on safe. So kneeling, safe to semi, back to safe, seated, safe to semi. All right. Fetal, right, safe to, on safety, safe to semi, safety back to supine, safe to semi, safety, oh, you know, I messed up already, I messed up, go back to fetal this way, on safe, all right, safe to semi there, then on safe, and swing your legs back behind for prone, safe to semi, Safe, bring the legs right back to where they were. Safe to semi, 
safe, supine, <laughs> there's a lot, safe to semi, safe, fetal to the other side, safe to semi, then safe, and swing your legs all the way back to prone, get your shot, safe to semi, all right, safe, bring your legs back to where they were, safe to semi, safe, go to supine, safe to semi, Safe, now get up to your seated position. And just, just finish it all the way to the top. I won't make you stay the semi all the way. All right? That is a lot of work, man, and you're thinking about it. So one thing that would help me doing that, if I'm just doing the workout portion, if I wanted to get that, that mindset of actually shooting while I'm doing that, is I would tell myself, bang, and press that trigger on that safe gun, like, bang. Even if the hammer's dropped already, you know, I just touch the trigger. If, uh, because usually it won't go safe semi right. once the hammer's drop. So, um, but I would say that bang in my head, shot, bang. Yep. All right, safe to semi, just to keep me uh, alert on that. Now, if I got to the point where, hey, I've got those fundamentals and some of them's kind of built in. Like for me, it's hard for me to do those things when I know I'm not really shooting. Right. As long as you're not giving yourself bad programming, you could do it without even rotating. Like if I never take the shot, like I'm just going into those positions just to do it and I'm not thinking about actually taking the shot, but I am double checking that I am seeing my sight so I know that I'm doing the position right, then just do it for the, the movement portion right. of it, right? You don't have to get into the nuts and bolts if you don't want to, right? Just be aware of your programming. Be yep. aware of your programming. Um, anything to add on to that? Right? No, man, I thought that was awesome. Like I learned a ton, I really appreciate it. Um, even that last thing, like I, I'm in relatively good shape, but just, just I think the the process of having to think through everything made it a lot more work for me, you know, because it wasn't just a physical exercise anymore; it was a mental exercise for yeah. me also. And I, I think it's like what we talked about earlier. For a jujitsu guy, the learning curve is going to be on the rifle side. For a gun guy, the learning curve is going to be on the movement side. Right. And then I think for somebody that's maybe got a little bit of both it's going to be the mental aspect of it you know making sure that because I, I started thinking through the last hour of, of things that you you've talked about while i was trying to move through that and listen to what you were saying and it was like it was taxing for me right i think you're going to benefit whatever level or whatever genre or group you align yourself with i think you'll benefit from it yeah. and i think ryan and i both are in the position of we just want you to get better. Whatever your vulnerabilities are, if it be the mobility portion, focus on that. If it be uh, the rifle portion and just manipulating that safe and manipulating that rifle safely and aligning those sights well, yep. then focus on that part. Um, what I really see, and you mentioned that, that made me think of when we taught this in classes, I get guys behind a barrier and say, hey, find a way to use that hole on that b barrier or that piece of wood or whatever and engage that target. And if they don't have an answer because they haven't really got in positions or atypical positions, and I'm not saying these positions work for everything right. that you will encounter, but it's a good start. It's a very good base, I believe. Uh, but they get in there and now they're, the mental part is just overwhelmed. Like they're, they're frustrated. They're worried about shooting the barrier with the barrel because they don't know my sight's aligned, but is my barrel aligned still? You got to watch that barrel. Um, all these different things that come into play and they definitely are or behind the power curve in that moment because they're expected to be somewhat effective and hit that dang target yeah. in that moment and you're kind of learning things and you're like, I've never been in this position, how do I do this? You, you wouldn't imagine the frustration people get like, just motherfucking, yep. they want to throw their rifle. I can believe it. So that's why, why wouldn't I just go ahead and get a good familiarization with these positions and with what my body does in those positions and what that rifle needs to do for me to be effective with it in those positions. Just do it, man. And you can do this in your living room. Yeah. That's what. Close your blinds. <laughs> yeah. Don't, my, I don't, know. <laughs> don't let anybody see you. <laughs> uh, one thing I do, I will add to that, is I do it outside on my, in my driveway with a mat, and I use my son's uh, airsoft rifle because it has an orange uh, tip on it, right? So people, if they, if they get freaked out, they can at least see, hey, I've got an orange right. tip. It's a, it's a training rifle, right? And I don't want to scare them. And you never know what neighbors will do oh, nowadays. No. So uh, that's what we got, guys. Ryan from Fit to Fight, Republic, uh, Z from Instructor Z coming at you from Tactical Rifleman, and hopefully this is one more thing that you can add to make you an overall better, what we define as fighter. Is that shooter, or is that boxer, or is that jujitsu? I don't know, it's yes. fighting. So that's what I got, guys. Thank you, man. That's we'll see you next time. You. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, thank you.
If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.